Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 30th of October. EU delegate says Kashmir has all elements to become India's dynamic region. Traders in Pakistan administered Kashmir observe strike against taxation policies. And Bangladesh PM Hasina lends support to band skipper Shakib Al Hassan. Now for all the details, the European Union delegation visiting India's Jammu and Kashmir to assess the ground situation in the region after the government revoked its special status addressed a presser on Wednesday. While one of delegates said Kashmir has all the elements to become one of the most dynamic regions of the country, other held terrorism responsible behind the situation in the valley. European Economic and Social Committee President Henry Malos on Wednesday said that Jammu and Kashmir has all the elements to become one of the most dynamic regions of India as the country has reached a very high level of growth. Speaking at a press conference of European Union Parliamentary Delegation in Srinagar city of Jammu and Kashmir, Malos said Kashmir is backward only because of the situation. One of the delegates who visited the Kashmir Valley to access the ground situation after the special status of the region was revoked said terrorism might be a cause behind the situation in the valley. Uh, unfortunately, has all the elements to become one of the most dynamic uh, country, one of the most dynamic sorry, region of India. But unfortunately, as India has uh, now reached a very high level of growth, development of wealth, development of business, a question of jobs. Uh, Kashmir, despite the fact that he got a lot of subsidies from the Indian state, from the central government, is backwards because of the situation. A 23-member European Union delegation visited Srinagar on Tuesday and interacted with local representatives in the valley to get a first-hand understanding of the situation. It was the first foreign delegation to have visited Kashmir since August. Families of five migrant workers from West Bengal province killed by terrorists in India's Jammu and Kashmir mourned their deaths on Wednesday. There was an atmosphere of shock and despair in Murshidabad, the hometown of the deceased. Families of five laborers hailing from India's West Bengal province who were killed by terrorists in northern Jammu and Kashmir mourned their deaths on Wednesday. The police said that the five men, all construction workers from West Bengal, were shot dead in Kulgam district of Jammu and Kashmir. Meanwhile, one person was injured in the incident. There was an atmosphere of shock and despair in Murshidabad, the hometown of the deceased workers. <laughs> डेथ हो गया तो हम खोज करके देखा तो हमारा गांव का ही सब है अभी थाना से बड़वा हुआ आया है सब इंक्वायरी कर रहा है Earlier at least four truckers were killed by terrorists in separate incidents in Jammu and Kashmir since August 5 when the Indian government revoked the special status granted to the region India accuses Pakistan of aiding terrorists and infiltrate them across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan, however, denies the allegations. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi concluded his visit to Saudi Arabia on Tuesday during which he held extensive talks with the top Saudi leadership and addressed a key financial forum in capital Riyadh. Twelve agreements were exchanged between the two nations aimed to furthering bilateral relations. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi concluded his visit to Saudi Arabia on Tuesday, during which he held extensive talks with the top Saudi leadership and addressed a key financial forum in capital Riyadh. 
Prime Minister Modi, who arrived in Riyadh on Monday night, held wide-ranging talks with Saudi King Salman bin Abdulaziz and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, during which Strategic Partnership Council was established to coordinate on important issues. India and Saudi Arabia signed 12 MOUs and agreements in key sectors including defense industries collaboration, renewable energy, security cooperation and civil aviation. The agreements were signed in the presence of Prime Minister Modi and Saudi Crown Prince. MOU to roll out rupee card in the kingdom was also signed, making Saudi Arabia the third country in the Persian Gulf to introduce India's digital payment system. Prime Minister Modi also delivered a keynote address at the High Profile Future Investment Initiative or FII, dubbed as Davos in the Desert. He said that India will invest 100 billion US dollars in oil and gas infrastructure to meet energy needs of an economy that is being targeted to nearly double in five years. He also sought investment from the oil-rich Saudi Arabia and other nations to boost supplies. Our $5 trillion economy is ready for the roadmap. यह लक्ष्य सिर्फ क्वांटिटेटिव ग्रोथ का ही नहीं है पर हर भारतीय की क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ बेहतर करने का भी है हम ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस में ही नहीं ईज ऑफ लिविंग में भी सुधार ला रहे हैं पॉलिटिकल स्टेबिलिटी प्रिडिक्टेबल पॉलिसी और बड़े डायवर्स मार्केट के कारण भारत में आपका इन्वेस्टमेंट सबसे अधिक लाभदायक रहेगा Bilateral relations between India and Saudi Arabia have been on an upswing over the last few years based on burgeoning energy ties. India's bilateral trade with Saudi Arabia was at 27.48 billion US dollars in 2017-18, making Saudi Arabia its fourth largest trading partner. Moving on, a shutdown strike was observed on Wednesday by traders and shopkeepers in illegally occupied region of Pakistan administered Kashmir against unfair taxation policies introduced by Islamabad. Traders and shopkeepers across the illegally occupied region of Pakistan administered Kashmir held a shutdown strike on Wednesday to protest against unjust measures by the Pakistani government to boost tax revenues. The traders said they reject the unfair taxation policies introduced in the federal budget on the dictation of International Monetary Fund or IMF, which have shrunk businesses. Among new measures, angering them is a rule requiring anyone buying items worth 50,000 rupees or more to produce identity papers, and they have claimed the process is complicated. <laughs> कि जो पॉलिसी 2020 सब पे लागू की है हमें वो मंजूर नहीं है क्योंकि वो पॉलिसी इतनी मुश्किल है कि 8 से 10 सफों के इंग्लिश के जो है फॉर्म जो है वो उन्होंने रखे हुए हैं कि जो हमारा एक गजट अफसर नहीं भर सकता पाकिस्तान हैड सिक्योर्ड अ प्रोविजनल 6 बिलियन डॉलर आईएमएफ लोन इन अप्रैल इट फॉलोड अ शार्प हाइक इन टैक्स रेवेन्यूज अमिड स्पाइरलिंग इन्फ्लेशन द ऑनगोइंग इकोनॉमिक क्राइसिस इन पाकिस्तान हैज शटर्ड द पीपल्स फेथ इन प्राइम मिनिस्टर इमरान खान गवर्नमेंट इलेक्टेड लास्ट ईयर ऑन अ प्लेज टू इराडिकेट पॉवर्टी एंड क्रिएट जॉब्स In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's National Security Advisor Hamdullah Mohib has called the Taliban for a one-month ceasefire to prove they still control their forces. Mohib on Tuesday said such a move should be a precondition for any eventual talks with the group. Afghanistan's National Security Advisor Hamdullah Mohib has called Taliban for a one-month ceasefire to prove they still control their forces. The Mohib in a press conference on Tuesday said if the Taliban really wants peace, it should prove how much their forces really obey their commands. He asserted the suggestion is for a one-month ceasefire, followed by negotiations and noted that such a move should be preconditioned for any eventual talks with the insurgent group. The National Security Advisor's remarks came after Afghan President Ashraf Ghani recently released seven-point peace plan. The Taliban has repeatedly rebuffed previous calls for a ceasefire, but last year agreed for a three-day truce. Mohib also targeted Pakistan and said any negotiations should include his government as well as Islamabad, which has long been accused of providing the Taliban insurgents a safe haven. 
Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina sympathized with star cricketer Shakib Al Hassan and said that the country's cricket board will stand by their test and T20 international captain in this difficult period. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina sympathized with star cricketer Shakib Al Hassan and said that the country's cricket board will stand by their test and T20 international captain in this difficult period. Bangladesh captain Shakib was banned from all cricket for 2 years with one year of that suspended on Tuesday after the all-rounder was found to have breached the International Cricket Council's anti-corruption code. The ICC in a statement said, Shakib, the national side's captain in all formats and one of the highest run scorers at the 2019 Cricket World Cup, had accepted three charges related to failing to report approaches he received to engage in corrupt conduct. The 32-year-old was found to have failed to report two approaches he received during a tri-series between Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and Zimbabwe in January 2018 and one related to a 2018 Indian Premier League match between Sunrisers Hyderabad and Kings XI Punjab. If Shakib observes the suspension, he will be able to play again from October 29, 2020, the ICC said. Shakib recently led a strike by Bangladesh cricketers, which they called off a week ago when the country's cricket board accepted most of their demands, including pay rises and other benefits. A Nepalese mountain climber and former British soldier Nirmal Purja has smashed the world record for climbing the world's highest 14 mountains in just over six months. Purja scaled the last of all 14 mountains with peaks higher than 8,000 metres above sea level on Tuesday. A Nepalese mountain climber and former British soldier Nirmal Purja has smashed the world record for climbing the world's highest 14 mountains in just over six months. Purja scaled the last of all 14 mountains with peaks higher than 8,000 meters above sea level on Tuesday when he reached the peak of Shisha Pangma, the 14th highest mountain in China. The former elite Royal Marine Regiment soldier of British force began his attempt in Nepal on Arnapurna Mountain, the 10th highest in the world, which is scaled on the 23rd of April this year. Purja joins a list of 40 climbers who have scaled the 14 highest peaks. He had a rotating support team made up of exclusively Nepalese climbers. In April this year, Purja took part in a successful rescue attempt of fellow climber Dr. Chin Kin who had been separated from his team and without basic essentials for 40 hours during the descent of Mount Arnapurna, the first mountain scaled in the attempt. Hundreds of devotees took part in a bizarre stone pelting festival near the Indian hill town of Shimla recently. The annual festival is held to appease Hindu goddess Bhadrakali. In a bizarre ritual, hundreds of locals in India's northern Himachal Pradesh province gathered and hurled stones at each other earlier this week during a stone pelting festival which is held to appease Hindu goddess Bhadrakali. Devotees from different clans participate in the annual festival a day after Diwali, beating drums and playing flutes before the stone pelting begins in Dhami village near the hill town of Shimla. It is a belief that the erstwhile queen of Dhami started the festival with an effort to end the tradition of human sacrifice in the temple of Bhadrakali. एक बार वहां से रानी साहिबा का डोला आ रहा था जो उस जगह पर रुका और वो नीचे बाहर उतरी उन्होंने कहा कि ये कुप्रथा जो है ये इसको बंद किया जाए और आज के बाद यहां सिर्फ पत्थर ऊंचे-ऊंचे फेंके जाएंगे दोनों साइड से और जब तक कोई लगा नहीं पत्थर किसी में जब पत्थर लग जाएगा तो उसका तिलक भद्रकाली माता के कराया जाएगा Divided into two groups, the historic ritual of stone pelting involves devotees hurling stones in the air until someone is hit and bleeds. The blood is then offered to Goddess Bhadrakali. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again. EU delegate says Kashmir has all elements to become India's dynamic region. Traders in Pakistan administered Kashmir observed strike against taxation policies. And Bangladesh PM Hasina lends support to band skipper Shakib Al Hassan.
Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.